Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Proxima Centauri and specifically about an event that occurred just over a year ago that basically made this relatively difficult to see star quite bright and it actually was uh, so bright that you could see it from Earth. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So the year is, well, actually a long time ago, back in uh, late 19th century and basically late 1800s, our planet Earth experienced a very, very unusual event known as the Carrington event. During this event, our sun that is somewhere over there increased in brightness so much, well, actually not so much, but by about 0.01%. Um, and created such a huge and such a powerful flare that when it got to Earth, it created quite a light show on the surface. Basically, uh, our planet was covered in northern and southern lights. I'm going to try to simulate this here by basically changing the aurora parameters, which I believe are right here so we're going to increase all of these values making this a very very powerful and very beautiful looking northern light so uh you could see these northern lights from pretty much everywhere and this happened because a tremendously large amount of charged particles from the super flare as it's called uh, reached our planet earth and created this very beautiful event uh, also during this event, uh, our planet lost a little bit of its uh, ozone layer and uh, this basically made the planet a little bit uh, more exposed to UV lights. In other words, it was a little bit more dangerous to live on our planet. But such events don't really happen very often, as a matter of fact, since then, no such event occurred. Only smaller flares usually happen. And by the way, f uh, solar flares usually happen because of um, an interaction with let me just come here for a second. Um, interaction of magnetic lines, um, which are formed right here in the uh, dark spots on the sun. Uh, and basically, as they entangle, they at some point snap and de-entangle. And when they snap, that's when the flares occur. It just so happens, though, that our sun is actually a mild one. As a matter of fact, our sun is one of the mildest stars out there, which makes Earth very, very lucky. This is not the same for Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri, which is the closest star to us, our closest neighbor with the closest exoplanet, is right there. But you can't really see it because it's actually a red dwarf. It's very, very dim. However, for about a few minutes in 2016, not only could you see it, but you could actually see it really, really well. A star that was maybe about this bright turns about this bright for a few minutes. It increased in luminosity by 68 times. Well, don't forget, the sun only increased by about 0.01%. This was 6800%. And then it went slowly dimmed again and went down in brightness. Now, we've only detected one of these, but since then we've actually detected a lot smaller ones. Uh, sometimes the Proxima star would actually increase in brightness by 30 times sometimes by 20 times and so on. Um, so these flares happen here quite often. As a matter of fact, super flares seem to be a regular occurrence around Proxima Centauri. We've detected at least uh, five to possibly eight really big ones in the last year. And every time it happens, you can actually kind of sort of see the star in the night skies, even without binoculars. It basically becomes a star very similar to some of the brightest stars in our sky. Now, this is very interesting, but it's also very uh, kind of, I guess, discouraging because these flares are so powerful that if they were to reach, and I guess they do reach, Proxima uh, Centauri b, which is the terrestrial planet that we discovered just over a year ago, this would mean that this planet would be stripped of ozone layer in like five years, at least 90% of it. Within 100,000 years, there would be nothing left it would then start affecting atmosphere and any kind of life on the surface. And without ozone layer on the surface and experiencing such flares, no life would survive here at all. As a matter of fact, um, 
during the super flare, the amount of radiation that's created by Proxima Centauri is so much that it's actually 100 times more powerful than is needed to kill any living thing on our planet. Uh, even tardigrades. Even tardigrades would not survive. So basically, this solar flare is life cleansing. It just destroys everything on the surface. This really kind of puts a dent on the theory of life, unless it's underneath the surface or unless it lives in the dark patches of the dark side of Proxima Centauri B. There's very likely no life here whatsoever. This also means that uh, this planet probably has tremendously large um, northern and southern lights as well, but it also kind of makes this a relatively uh, dead place, mostly due to these flares. Also, forget about calling this a new home, because we would not be able to survive such tremendously powerful solar flares. And so since uh, this first detection, we've actually found quite a lot of uh, flares around Proxima Centauri, but also other um, red dwarfs and other M-type stars as well. As a matter of fact, today we believe that about two-thirds of all red dwarfs are just as active as Proxima Centauri. Luckily for us, uh, we think that maybe Trappist-1 is not one of them, it's sort of in the minority, because we haven't detected many powerful solar flares from this star. But, nevertheless, uh, it still is a red dwarf, meaning that it still does get more solar flares, or star flares, that is, uh, than our own sun. And because, like, 90% of all stars are red dwarfs, and the majority of these red dwarfs are extremely active and have super powerful uh, super flares, this kind of implies that the vast majority of all planets in our galaxy most likely experience these tremendously powerful events that strip them of any ozone layer, most of the atmosphere, and most likely leave any planets completely barren and lifeless. Now, all of this is still, of course, a speculation based on the science we know uh, right here on Earth, but it does kind of make sense. On the other hand, that of course also implies that our planet Earth, yet again, is one weird, unusual, and super lucky world. We don't really know how it got to be so lucky and how it got to be so uh, peaceful and protected from pretty much everything that would cause life to not exist here, but it just kind of happened and we should be really thankful for it. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about our neighbor Proxima Centauri and its unusual super flares that actually make it so bright that you can see it in the night skies. Actually, one day, maybe, just maybe, you'll actually get lucky and see it in the night skies if you happen to look at uh, the region where it's located during the super flare. But don't hold your breath, because the chances of it happening is still pretty low, and it's kind of a random event, we can't really predict them. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else and something you may have not known before, and do subscribe if you still haven't. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And maybe, just maybe, you want to share this video with someone who watches space videos and likes space in general, and maybe, just maybe, you want to click on the Patreon button and consider supporting the channel. Alright, cool, bye bye.